oh, 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 oh. Being a man means responsibility, accepting it, leaning into it. I don't know, and, and I think I'm okay with that. Love. Tenacity. Strong. For me, a man means gentleness, and it means collaboration. I'm a man. I told my son it's okay to cry. My dad never told me that. Why are some men so reluctant to call themselves feminists? Well, it's because a lot of us have a complicated relationship with that term. Identifying as a feminist for me is my way of advocating for women. But a lot of the men that I've talked to refuse to call themselves feminists, even if they do want equal rights for women. But for my guest today, actor Matt McGorry, a self-proclaimed feminist, he's taken a lot of backlash. So how do we find our role in this movement as allies? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about today. I'm Jason Rosario, and this is Dear Men. If for me, feminism means to be an advocate for the rights, the beauty, and the narrative of women, uh, then 100% uh, I'm a feminist. I believe in, in, in girl power. I believe in woman power. I believe in the movements, and, and I think a lot of the arguments are just. But if you lean all the way, all the way, girl power, every, it's just, to, to me, it's too much. Feminism, as I define it, is the belief that you know all genders are created equal and deserve equal rights. And I think all genders include men. I thought my, of myself as being a rather enlightened man, and I had no idea the extent to which my female friends, colleagues, coworkers, employees have experienced on, on really on, on a day-to-day -day basis. You, know, you think about all the interactions you've had at work, at, you know, when you're out partying with colleagues. I think if you're not reflecting on that in this period, then you got your head in the sand. I don't find that I caused the problem, but I recognize that it is my responsibility to say something to the people on the train that's kind of rude to a young girl. I remember I'm in college and I'm a male and there's alcohol. I saw men behaving in ways and I thought to myself, I mean, I saw what was equivalent to, to rape. I wish that I had it. Right now, as I'm telling you, I wish that I had known what I know now or had more balls or something, but stepped up. I would always pull my friends to the side if they did something, you know, a little too aggressive. I'd pull them to the side and be like, hey man, listen, you, you can't do that, bro. Like, it could have really bad consequences. The problem I see with this movement, if somebody accuses someone of doing something, the Me Too movement, doesn't have to be true. I've seen people's lives ruined. I think we have to own up to where we can own up and we have to show solidarity where we should. You might know actor Matt McGorry from Netflix's Orange is the New Black, and ABC's How to Get Away with Murder. He's a self-proclaimed feminist who admits he's not perfect, but wants to start a conversation with men about the new rules of engagement in the Me Too era. Matt, you have received some backlash from both men and women about your activism and your position around feminism. From men that don't necessarily want to hear that from you, and then you have women that feel like you've taken un unnecessary credit. So you feel like you're in the middle somewhat? Mm. Like, how do, you, how do you wrestle with that? It's not my place to be the voice of Black Lives Matter. It's not my place to be the voice of feminism. It is my place to be the voice of white anti-racism or to be the voice uh, that is encouraging men to embrace feminism and being much more specific and intentional about who I'm talking to rather than just speaking out, uh, I think is, is really important um, because that is our work as allies is really, again, to engage men. It's not really to teach women about you know, the stuff that they go through. And I remember initially feeling challenged, um, as I think probably a lot of men are, if they're doing what, if they're trying to be in integrity, is like, are my friends gonna still wanna be friends with me? You know, am I, am I, am I still the fun guy? Am I, you know, am I, do I always wanna be the person who has to have that conversation? And I'm happy to say that I know that it's made the relationships in my life with other men um, who I wanna be in relationship with much stronger. They know to expect that we're probably gonna have a conversation about like toxic masculinity in the course of our hangout. I guess the challenge would be, 
challenging them to have more of those conversations more intentionally with the other friends outside of the circle. Each one teach one, right? There you go. But unfortunately, a lot of people, a lot of men that we know in high places, especially in your industry, had to reckon with this stuff because of a specific instance. Right. Unfortunately, the nature is that oftentimes it does take people being jarred into it in order to really start to consider and reconcile. A lot more men now understand that there is a problem, right? Because of the Me Too movement and everything that's happened, we understand that there is a problem that affects all the women in our lives to some degrees. And so the question we can really ask ourselves now that we have to ask ourselves is, do you want to be a part of the solution or do you not? Now that we have this information, um, how will you be accountable? I want to move on to a, a relatively new issue that's been emerging as a result of Me Too and, and uh, men struggling to find their footing. And this is the issue of consent mm. and so social consent apps. Apps that essentially allow for men and women to engage and then be able to solidify whether or not they want to proceed past a certain point sexually. Mm. What are your thoughts on that? Most of us were not taught consent in any way that was good, right? We're taught like, and a lot of it is we're not taught anything except by our peers and by my industry, right? By film and television, right? What does the cool guy look like, right? He, he knows about sex, he takes what he wants, you know, like oftentimes we see the guy, you know, they're in the conversation, in the middle of the conversation, just grabs her and kisses her, right? And what if she didn't want to kiss him? But we don't ever see that. And so I think what we're taught about consent is just keep going, just keep going until you get a no, right? And I think what has been asked of us, um, and what I do think the standard should be, is this idea of affirmative enthusiastic consent, right? Which is every step of the way, you ask, right? And, and unless someone seems excited to go to the next step, uh, if they don't, stop, talk about it, if they wanna talk about it, and if they don't, you stop. But here's the, here's the thing, yeah. some men, will say that they don't read those signs very well. Right. So how do we navigate through that? Because right. that, there's a lot of gray area. Right. I mean, Aziz Ansari, for example. A woman calling herself Glenn, uh, Grace says that actor Aziz Ansari is guilty of sexual misconduct because he didn't pick up on her nonverbal cues, that she didn't want to really have sex, but she ended up having, doing sexual acts on him, but she says that she was not comfortable with it. So I think that situation in particular mm -hmm. resonated with a lot of men because they can identify sure. with that. So I think that's where the gray area is. So how do we even navigate through that? The tricky thing is the conversation is also dictated by legal terms, right? And by the terms of the fact that because most of us are not willing to do that deep work, um, I think that the solution in some ways has become, well, we have to force this person out, you know? Um, which if someone's not really willing to do that deep work of accountability kind of becomes the default. But the, the question though of morality, is this right or is this wrong, feels much less gray to me in that situation, right? Because this is a person who, to, to my recollection of the reading, you know, did express discomfort, right? I mean, I think what it has to come back to in some ways is why would we want to, to be with someone sexually who is not 100% on board with being with us, right? Like, what does that mean to us as men? How is that? tied into our identity as, you know, in masculinity and proving ourselves as men. And we need to sort of work backwards from there because the truth is we've been getting it wrong this entire time. We gotta do better. Yeah, we gotta do better. If I say I'm about justice and equity, I gotta be about it. And every day I'm taking in messages that are telling me the opposite, that are training me to be the opposite way. If I wanna be committed to that, I have to be willing to say, let me learn. Thanks again for being here and breaking bread with me. I Thank really you. appreciate it, man. Appreciate it so much, yeah, thank you. So I wanna hear from you. Hit me up on social media at Jason Rosario, use the hashtag Dear Men, and let me know what you're thinking about Me Too, Time's Up, and this new normal. Thanks again for watching. I'm Jason Rosario, and this is Dear Men.